Hi everybody and welcome back to Nerd Bonner Reactions. I'm Anna and today we are continuing Good Omens with Season 2, Episode 3. Um, I was planning to record this one last night, but I ended up working on editing instead. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. Super excited by a lot of the little things I noticed while I was editing, like the book Gabriel, well, Jim, fanned the one angel with, I still haven't caught her name, um, was a Terry Pratchett book. And I just love that because they're throwing in little nods to outside stuff, whether it's the authors or Doctor Who references for David Tennant. And there's probably some Michael Sheen ones in there too that I just haven't caught because I'm not as familiar with his filmography. But let's go ahead and get into episode three. I can't wait. And I don't know what I'm expecting, but like I said in yesterday's episode, just I've read probably far too much fan fiction. And the whole was Crowley an archangel, or are we going to see Raphael? is still kind of my top theory, but I don't know, like the name of the pub or cafe or whatever it is, the resurrectionist place, um, that brings up some other possibilities as well. Because initially I was thinking, oh, well, 66 Goat Gate, it's going to be a demon that's been cursed, like Crowley was. But what if it's not? Because when you think resurrection, there is an obvious option there that I kind of overlooked because of the address. So I'm really excited to see Crowley dealing with this meeting that Aziraphale just happened to find a way out of. I just hope that the bookshop is actually still there when Aziraphale gets back. I am also really curious to see whether Aziraphale can actually drive. Because yes, he took the test even though he didn't have to, but he took it 90 years ago. And he gives off so much just like distractible, almost ADHD vibes that I don't know that I believe he still really remembers how to drive after 90 years. So let's go ahead and get into this. If you enjoy the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you would like to watch the full reaction, minimally edited, just taking out like bathroom breaks, checking on my kids, stuff like that. That will be available on Patreon, where you can watch along with your own copy for as little as $3 a month. Uh, for $5 a month, you can also join my every other month Patreon live streams. And let's go ahead and get this. Take my advice, you won't look at it. Listen again. I don't believe my relationship is any concern of yours. Obviously not. <laughs> Save where it intrudes on my girl's welfare and quality of life from coffee. That's nice. <laughs> Somebody's got a sense of humour or an interesting kink. Either way, puts a smile on your face. Not on your face, Nina, love. Obviously. A little bit mean. But also, not wrong. That relationship is not healthy. Also, why is Muriel showing up as the police? Very believable. Yes, exactly. I'm a human. How can I help you? Well, sir, <clears throat> as you may know, as a human police officer, I can unobtrusively monitor you without raising suspicion. Indeed, <laughs> you can. Great. <laughs> well, could I come in and do it inside, please? She I'm is just adorable. It's really noisy out there. I can't hear anything. By all means. <laughs> 
Liz is a human police officer who's just popped in to have a quick look at a cup of tea. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Tell me, Constable. Inspector. Oh, you know, you, you are dressed as a constable. Inspector Constable. That's my name. Of course it is. First visit to Earth, is it, by any chance? Yes. It's amazing, isn't it? Just... <laughs> Oops. Or rather, no. Obviously, I've been here for, like, 200 years. Oh, but when I said yes... Yeah. Work with you, Angel, in private. Oh, no, but uh, I'm supposed to observe you. But don't worry. We can always tell you everything we she talked is about. So adorable. Oh, great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I don't know how you lot have managed to stay in charge all this time. I'm not sure we have, have we? Where's Gabriel? What is that angel doing here? Jim is in his bedroom upstairs. I told him bookshops are always closed on a Wednesday. As for Inspector Constable at a guess, they were sent to verify the 25 Lazari miracle you and I seem to have accidentally performed together the other night. Uh, that's how you lot measure miracles. How many times are you going to brought someone back from the dead? Well, we that? just need to get Nina to do the love thing with Maggie. One fabulous kiss and we're good. I have a plan. Excellent. Can I have the car keys? <laughs> this makes him so very uncomfortable. All done? Yeah. Interested in humans falling in love, would you? Uh, I, I, I know for some members of the police force it's a bit of a hobby. Yes, yes I am. Oh, especially... Maggie and Nina over the road. Ah, yes. Well, we humans of Earth have a saying. You can only tell if people are in love by waiting a few days because humans are weird and that's how it works. Yes, <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> well, we're going to Edinburgh. Oh my goodness. Is the Bentley basically driving itself? Aww. I mean, the fact that it's cooperating means it must like him. <laughs> Sean Bakerstaff. Are you kidding me? Oliver Wood? And he insisted I visit a local graveyard at midnight. Okay. He had come upon something, he said, that might amuse me. A statue of the Supreme Archangel himself. Definitely Gabriel. It's uncanny. Do you think he knows? Probably comes here to stare at it, marveling at his own beauty. Yeah. I think there's someone here. This one's mine, you bastards. Rather strange time to be burying someone. I've got a spade. If the two of you are still here in ten seconds, I'll use it on you. <laughs> but when he gets to use you. his... You say potato, I say actual accent. My side are gonna love a spot of Buddhist natural. Allow me to introduce myself. Really? I'm English. Mr. McFell. Um, I just thought I, sh I should warn you that digging up bodies... <sighs> Well, it's, it's warm. He's not using it anymore. There's something for his family to cry over. Where would you like we had with your corpse? It's not the danger of what you're doing. Don't you know that it's wrong? All I know is there's a surgeon in Newington who will give me a great big lot of cash for a fresh body like that one. Did you do it? This piss drench patch is where me and my pal sleep. <laughs> you all right, Lee Morag? Never better, him. Never better. He's trying to keep wee more agony alive. And it doesn't hurt anyone who isn't already dead. So you can shove your morals up your arse, Mr. McFell. What's in the battle, Hen? I didn't. Please tell me you didn't. Oh, she absolutely did. Nice, fresh body. It was just this once. I promise we can get seven, even eight pounds for a good one. We can get a room in a proper boarding house. Not like the last one. Little by little, Aziraphale is starting to understand. Uh, I hope he's starting to understand that sometimes you do the wrong thing for the right reasons. Anyway, is it wicked you needed the money? That is irrelevant. Look, I am good. You? I'm afraid, are even. But people get a choice. You know, she is wicked. Right. 
the issue. It only works if you start everyone off equal. You can't start someone off like that and expect it to do as well as someone born in a castle. Ah, but no, exactly. no, that's a good bit. The lower you start, the more opportunities you have. So Elspeth here has all the opportunities because she's so poor. Are you getting it? Oh, that's much. I wonder if it's still going to default to Queen, even though Crowley's not in the car. Music that stays classical music. Angel. Okay. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> We're getting along terribly well together. You realize I can feel when you drive the Bentley under the speed limit. <laughs> He's corrupting. What's that? Decorrupting. No. Hmm. My car does not make that noise. What are you doing to it? Nothing. <laughs> You've done something to the car, haven't you? I can feel it. Oh my really god. It, 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 my car it, is not yellow. It's it yellow. never been yellow. It is not going to start being yellow now. Change it back. But it's pretty. If you don't change it back right now, I'm going to start selling people books. In fact, I'll even give some away. At least the Bentley's trying to protect him. <laughs> Is there any news about Gabriel yet? Uh, no. Uh, no news of uh, a cursed enemy, my lord. No? Tell me the moment we learn anything. Yeah, of course. I love Beelzebub. Beelzebub's actually worried. Do you ever think? Like, almost just be nice freaking someone out. Someone told you what a good job you did. Do you want to go to the dull pits? Yeah. This season is really messing with the order of things, so to speak. Let me see. It's a um, thing that happens when objects are pulled together. In this case, they're all pulled downwards because the Earth is the largest thing around. Why? Uh, honestly, um, I don't remember. It seemed like <laughs> a good idea when we were all talking about it. Um, so things we stay where you put them, not just drift off on them. But it doesn't stay where I put them. It goes down. Except for flies, they go up. Well observed. Yeah. So, the plan. Operation Lovebirds. He's still on with that, huh? Until they both happen to be nearly awning. Then, Sudden down the wall, they back out of the rain, bump into each other, <laughs> look into each other's eyes, and baboom. Baboom. That's the plan. What? Mr. Dalrymple, FRC is here. That last name. I'm a surgeon of the doc. I am sorry to inform you. It's one that Michael that McKean brought up. This is not pickled herring. So either he's a witch finder or he's related to a witch finder. But that last name is one of the ones that Michael McKean brought up last season. Stop. It would have taken a miracle <laughs> to render that freshly buried body unsellable. Oh dear. Something smells rather right. Is this a joke? I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Dalrymple. Oh, what a shame. Such a warm night, I suppose. I can't use this. Miss <laughs> How did that happen? I tell you what, this one's half price. Doctor, huh? I'm not paying a penny for this, this soup. You did this, didn't you? Just an unexpected blessing. Doctors, perhaps I can interest you in a wee tipple while we discuss my work. It's terrible, buying the bodies. But I'm trying to teach students anatomy and basic physiology. I don't like it any more than you do, Dr. McPhail. The trouble is, there are never enough murderers. Hmm. I'm sorry. Murderers get hanged. No one cares if we cut up murderers. Excellent idea. More murderers. I'll drink to that. <laughs> You're both medical men. What is your professional opinion on that, Doctor? That's a foot. So it's definitely not a fault. <laughs> That's my point. If you two smart gentlemen can't identify Starting it, what are my students to make of it? I removed this tumor from a seven-year-old boy. Oh, oh dear. And is he? 
And that is why we need a steady supply of cadavers. We need to cut. If we can't cut, we can't learn. If we can't learn more, a lot more, then how on earth are we going to win the battle against monstrosities like this one? I'm just trying to save lives and teach students. Me to introduce myself. I'm what's known as a newspaperman. Tell me, is this the resurrectionist public house? <laughs> You're one of those investigating reporters, no doubt. I am. Well, what can I do for you? And uh, what would you like to drink? Oh, nothing oh, sweetie. for me. I'm just here to get the skinny lowdown on that mysterious song that played itself on your establishment's jukebox. That was. This chap, by any chance, among those present. Listen, I serve hundreds of people a week. I'm not going to remember some. Well, yeah. Oh. Aye, okay. I remember him. What's the name? No, no. Was he with? Oh, I don't, don't know. Just, uh, just another Mason. I don't want your help. But you were right. Toddy snatching alleviates human suffering. That is a good thing. So, I can help this time. I don't trust you. Being realized the error of my ways, I resolved to assist Elspeth and Wee Morag in their noble quest to decrease human <laughs> suffering. Hello, there, Morag. Nice I love pressure. This, this is so, so. Alerted the local watchman. Might have slightly overdone it on that one. Not bad. Zero I'm going to save her. I know it's not technically This was your allowed, screw up. Fix it. This, this is all my fault. And I really can't bear it if that young woman... Mm -hmm. I could heal her. Is no, it? no, no. It's the right thing to do. I will brook no... I, I, what, what are you... Wow, she's practical. Well, it's not soup, I'll give you that. She didn't even want to be in that graveyard. She only wanted to look after me. Well, she's done that, hasn't she? There you go. Blood money. What are you going to spend it on? Gin? Wine? For a toast. I hate judgmental people. People die, so we can all toast we more ag. We'll toast her, then I'm going. And you can use this money to bury me somewhere where no ghouls will ever dig me back up again. Going? Where are you going? To join we more ag. So can we toast her now, please? 
No, 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 no. What did you do that for? Go kill yourself. Constitution oh, of an ox. Oh, Why do you need laudanum to kill oh, myself? No dying. Enough for dying. No more dying. No more dying. Dying is just, it's just, it's just wrong. Really? Ah. Okay, I'd avoided pausing up until this point, but I can't because the more I hear him talk in this particular over-the-top bit of accent, all I can think of is him as Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> and I, I just, I just can't. <laughs> But Aziraphale really screwed up on this one, and I'm not so much blaming him because, like, comparatively to the other angels, even at this point, he wasn't nearly as out of touch as the rest of them. But the level of judgment he places on other people for things that are beyond their own control, things they're doing to survive, to make sure others survive, to help just in general. And then the surgeon judging Elspeth for what she'd use the money for. All she wanted it for in the first place was to get off the street. But he made the assumption that she was going to buy gin or wine or something like that. And that is an assumption that is so out and about now. Like, I live in a town where there are a large contingent of homeless. And... So many of the people around here are like, oh, well, there's no point giving them money because they're just going to spend it on drugs or alcohol. Okay, maybe they will, but maybe they'll spend it on food or healthcare or getting off the street. Maybe we should put a bit more faith in humanity instead of assuming the worst about people. And maybe... This is a little bit of a personal soapbox for me. <sighs> Either way, I'm glad to see Aziraphale gradually, throughout the years, kind of moving away from the really, truly judgmental parts of being an angel and starting to understand people better. Like, right, on, let's get You're gonna just Angel. you idiot. Angel. I love you. That convinces her that poverty I love is you, but you're going to discorporate if you're not careful. I have to stop you there. Crowley, I... Mm-hmm. Where yep. are you? Discorporated. Yeah, 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 step on me! I see you! I answer you! He didn't discorporate. He shrunk. Okay, I can do this. Too far in the opposite direction, sweetie. Sinned very bigly. Trying to kill yourself. Very bigly. I mean, that's, it's not on. If you dare. Try to snuff yourself again. You are damned forever. Unless. 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 How much have you got in your vault? Uh, me. How much, Dr. McFell? About 90 guineas. That should be enough. Give He's her the money. Hmm. Give her the money, Angel. But what am I going to do with 90 guineas? Buy a farm. And be good. Not just pretendy good, but properly good. I promise I will. I promise. Do you, though? 
No, that's good enough for me. There you are then, hen, off your pot. Mm. A demon can get no other trouble from doing the right thing. Last time I knew that! You just did a very good deed indeed. Trust me, if hell noticed that little display, I'd already be... Yeah, I'd already be... That was the last I was to see of Crowley for quite some time. Excuse me, I hate to be a bother, but do either of you gentlemen happen to possess a mobile phone that I could use? This is not good. I'm out of minutes. Mostly I just use it for Twitter and Grindr. Oh, that's very kind of you. <laughs> uh, now I'm afraid I do need a little privacy. <laughs> okay, two things. First, the guy with the face, face tattoo says no regrets, which is such a meme. Secondly, <laughs> the guy who just gave him his phone only uses it for Twitter and Grindr. Hmm. Okay. This is adorable. This is so adorable. Like, Xerophil honestly doesn't even consider the fact that he might be in danger. And then he is proven right by just being so adorably confident that this guy just let him borrow his phone. <laughs> I'd like you to call the telephone in my bookshop, please. Phone? It's on my desk. How many miracles does he use without even realizing he's doing it? Bell's book, huh? You Crowley. probably don't have what you're looking for, Sweetie. and we wouldn't sell it to you. Stop if you throwing did. books. I think I found some clues. Gabriel has indeed visited the um, establishment in question in company with. With? I don't know, someone. But he wasn't alone, anyway. That's a proper clue, isn't it? Oh, listen, I think it's about to happen. The awning of a new age. I'll see you when you get back. Right, right, I can be all right. I just wanted to say that I'm not sure what happened the other night. But can we talk? You're upset and you're acting as if it's my fault. I don't really know what's going on in your life, but I know that whatever happened the other night, I didn't lock us in. Hopefully it will rain, you rain. I felt like it. Just, it's not about you. Lindsay decided I must be having an affair because I wasn't texting back and I just, I couldn't deal. That's not fair. I mean, I've never, well, we did it. It was the power going out. Come on, Lindsay. What the hard brain. Not having a, what your partner said. I know we're not. I suppose I owe you an apology. No, you don't. It, it, it's just, I've never... I'm not that kind of person. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not your type. The awning's gonna give out. You have no, no idea. Oh, you so are. Step in the right direction, though. In darkness, in great storms, and the dead will leave their graves and walk the earth once more. And there will be great lamentations. Go on. Oh. Every day, it's getting closer. What are we talking about here? Invite her in, let her do it for herself. <sighs> He's in there. You think so? 
I'm surprised you haven't popped in for a quick poke around. You know I can't step over the threshold. Oh, mm, shame I can't invite you in. You're welcome to look all you want from there. Uh... Maybe you'll spot an archangel. Hello, customer. And if you won't let me in... Not technically something I can do. Beelzebub <laughs> and the Dark Council and all the forces of hell will declare war. On me? On your friend. That's an awful big threat for... Uh-oh. You have no idea the trouble you're causing here. That's a problem. No. Or yes. Or no. Yeah, I'll tell you something, Jim. Or Gabriel, if you're in there somewhere. <laughs> If any harm comes to Zirafel because of this, I will. Yes? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's too late for that now, isn't it? Protective Crowley is my favorite. It's always too late. This is going with Crowley seems to be doing all the good things, and Aziraphale seems to be doing all the bad things, or at least trying to, and then realizing he's doing the wrong thing. And I'm worried whether helping Gabriel is another example of Aziraphale doing the wrong thing. Because between the matchbox and the fly, I'm starting to feel like Beelzebub and Gabriel are tied in this together. It has to be relevant that, aside from Shax, the only demon... Well, we saw that one guy, but he's clearly comic relief character. Um... Beelzebub is very, very relevant and tied to this somehow, and I may not know how, but I swear that has to be relevant, that a fly was the only thing in the box. I don't know enough about, like, I'm not... Christian. I was raised in Christianity, but I don't particularly remember a lot of verses beyond the big ones, so I don't know exactly what it was that Gabriel was quoting, or that God was quoting through him, um, because it can't be overlooked that we're getting the Francis McDormand voiceover every time Gabriel's eyes turn purple again. So that has to be God talking through Gabriel. I don't think God could miss the fact that she was talking through Gabriel to Crowley rather than Aziraphale this time. Okay, so... <laughs> Either we're getting second coming, we're getting the rapture, we're getting something end of the world like that's got to be I don't know I want to say that that's got to be where this is headed but with three episodes in it in a six episode series how I don't know, if we're just now setting that up, maybe that's going to be like next season plot, and this is all like, oh, this is so infuriatingly, ineffably good. Like, I love mysteries. I, I watch a lot of murder mysteries. 
this is giving me that same vibe of, oh, we're getting a lot of little things dropped, we're getting a lot of foreshadowing, but it's not going at a pace that I really feel like it's going to resolve this season. If it does, that's just credit to Neil for being amazing and being able to pull things together literally in the last hour's worth of time. But whatever the destination is, I am so on board for the journey, especially because I'm really loving the little bits of the Maggie and Nina subplot that we're getting here. Also, I know it's maybe unfair to make this judgment based on the text messages we saw and just the perception other people seem to have. Lindsay is not a healthy partner. Maggie, on the other hand, perfect. I mean, come on. I ship this so hard. <laughs> now, I, I do solidly believe that Nina should very definitively end things with Lindsay before beginning something with Maggie. But that's where I want this to go, because Lindsay seems very toxic. <laughs> Alright, I will see you guys in the next episode.